Okie dokie. Let's let's go ahead and start this CLE. It is 12 o'clock on the dot and we're going to go until one o'clock. Um, try to have some time at the end for questions. Um, but if questions come up, just put those in the chat box or, or put them in the Q&A um, and we'll make time. We'll make time for that at the end. Um, OK. Well, I oh. wanted to first of all, thank you, Abby. I wanted to welcome everybody um, to this is the first CLE of the year. And it's, we're off to a good start. We see very good attendance today. Um, I wanted to give a couple of uh, brief announcements and just housekeeping items. Uh, on January 13 and the 27, from noon to one, we'll be having our first uh, free legal answers clinic. So um, following up this CLE, I'm gonna send an email with a couple of links in, in order for you guys to join if you haven't as a law student or an attorney to participate in these clinics. Um, and then also I'm going to send out another email with your certificate of attendance. If you can please fill those out and then send them back to me so then I can uh, submit them. Um, also, at the end of the presentation, we'll have uh, a browser that will open up with a brief survey. Please fill it out. That way we can have your feedback and we can improve upon that. Um, and finally, I wanted to introduce our presenter today. Abby Brenneman. Abby has been the program coordinator since uh, 2021 and is currently also serving as a Army Judge Army General for the National Guard, and she'll be deployed to Saudi Arabia. So without further ado, here is Abby Brenneman. Thanks, Edith. Um, I'm really happy that you're in this position. I'm, I'm glad that uh, that somebody's taking over for me for the next year to continue on my work. Um, Someone that I trust and that I know, I've actually known Edith since law school. We went to law school together. We worked on fundraising events and all kinds of different community projects with the Hispanic Law Students Association. So I know that access to justice is in good hands. Um, if you guys, I, I know some of you know me already, but for those of you who don't, like she said, my name is Abby Brenneman and I'm the program coordinator for Access to Justice. Um, and we're gonna talk about Access to Justice. I'm gonna tell you more about the organization, what we do, what it's all about. Um, but I just wanted to let you know that, uh, that, uh, that like she said, the CLE forms are going to go out in an email afterwards. So if you're wondering about your, your CLE accreditation, I know a lot of you want to get your ethics credit knocked out. Um, and that's what we're, that's what we're here for. That's what, that's what we're going to help you do for the CLE. Um, uh, so just stay tuned after if, um, one thing to remember though, if you do not receive an email from Edith with your CLE attendance form, check your spam folder. And if you still haven't gotten it in, let's say, by um, the end of the day today, go ahead and shoot at Edith an email and let her know. Um, because sometimes we do have email issues that pop up where things go that they don't, they're not deliverable and we'll get error messages and that type of thing. Um, so give it a minute, give it a couple hours, um, check your spam folder. And then if none of that works out, then shoot Edith an email and she will, uh, she'll get that over to you. Also, uh, just to keep, it, keep this in mind, we are only allowed to send the CLE attendance forms to those of you who, who are logged into the Zoom for the requisite period of time. Um, so if you have any kind of connection issue, uh, make sure to let Edith know afterwards just so that she knows that you were off, but you came back on or you used somebody else's account or you used your phone number um, so that we can get that attendance form to you. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. And slideshow. Okay. All right. So this is how to do pro bono online, aka Arkansas Free Legal Answers training, which is the tool by which we will be doing the pro bono uh, services online. We've got a couple logos up here. We've got Arkansas Access to Justice, us, obviously, the American Bar Association and the Arkansas Bar Foundation. Big thank you to the Arkansas Bar Foundation. They are a huge funder of this program and they allow us to uh, get the word out to be able to recruit volunteer attorneys, to retain volunteer attorneys, and to let folks know that this is a service that's available to them, very important resource that they can use. And of course, American Bar Association, the actual organization that 
um, put together uh, for legal answers. I think it actually started in one state and then it was picked up and spread across the country. And now there's a free legal answers in most states. And there's also a free legal answers website um, on the federal level where people can submit questions, uh, veteran, veteran laws questions and immigration law questions, obviously, because those are federal law. Okay, okay, um, here's our first poll question. Oh, I think, well, <laughs> I think all our poll questions are on one uh, are on one section, but that's okay. Just answer question number one. Just answer question number one. Can you guys see the poll on your screen? Somebody let me know in the chat. Yes, but can't submit, okay. Oh, okay, I see what you're saying, I see what you're saying. Okay, well, I guess you can go ahead and answer all those questions <laughs> and we're gonna get to them and actually answer them during the presentation. So scratch that, scratch what I said, go ahead and give me an answer for all five of these. And then we're gonna go and answer each one of those uh, during the presentation. Um, and hopefully that'll help you be engaged more and kind of exercise your brain. Awesome, okay, everybody has answered all the questions. Are we in that? Well, there we go. Almost all. We had about three or four more seconds. Okay. We got very uh, different answers there. Okay, so let's go through and let's find out what we got wrong and what we got right. Um, and who do we have in the crowd? We've got about 11 of you are attorneys in private practice, uh, nonprofit attorneys about six, uh, no judges or law students, and then other, okay. All right, so what are we talking about today? Well, like I said, we're going to start off with a brief overview of Arkansas Access to Justice, tell you a little bit about what we do, um, how we go about doing that. We're talking about justice gap issues. What is the justice gap? What does that really refer to? And um, we're going to do an overview of Arkansas Free Legal Answers, which, as I mentioned, is the tool that we'll be using, that you'll be using, hopefully, to do pro bono, uh, to give pro bono legal advice online. Who are our partners? Who are the clients? How do they become clients? How do they become qualified for that? Who are our volunteers? Who's allowed to be volunteer, volunteer who's not? And then how do you actually go about answering these questions? And we're talking about, you know, actually signing up for the site, the whole process for doing that, navigating the site. Um, we're gonna give you some of the components of a good answer and ways that you can really um, give a concise, thorough and clear, efficient answer through the website to folks who have submitted questions and how to supplement your answer. And then finally, we're gonna end with some frequently asked questions. So access to justice, we were created by the Arkansas Supreme Court in 2003 after a request by legal aid in the Arkansas Bar Association. And our mission is right there in the name, access to justice. It is to ensure all Arkansans get equal access to justice in civil cases, specifically civil cases. So not including any kind of criminal law, um, that we have the Public Defenders uh, Commission for that. All right, and so, yes, we have this mission, but how, what are we doing? Um, is it likely lay providers who are actually boots on the ground folks representing people? No, but there are other ways 
to improve access to justice. There are other ways that we can fill that gap. Um, and one of which is researching justice gap issues, um, developing policy proposals to narrow the justice gap. So some examples of that would be the emeritus attorney rule, uh, which we helped advocate for and put into place with the partnership from the Arkansas Bar Association. And so what that is, what, what that is, is it is a um, administrative order, administrative order 15.3, which allows retired and uh, voluntary inactive attorneys to provide pro bono legal services uh, to low income citizens. There are a couple different things that um, that are designated in the administrative order. For example, to qualify, they can't be the subject of any, they couldn't have been the subject of a public disciplinary action for the last five years. Um, and they have to provide the service through, uh, through one of these designated legal aid providers. So us, Legal Aid of Arkansas, Legal Services, and then of course it has to be done without fee or without the expectation of a fee. So if somebody just doesn't pay you, then that wouldn't count. <laughs> um, all right, and something else that we've, we've been involved with is limited scope representation. You'll also hear this referred to as unbundling. And we do CLEs on that too. Um, our executive director, Jordan Bates Rogers has done some great CLEs on that. And, and he uh, we will probably get one recorded and maybe uploaded to YouTube if we don't already have that. Um, probably in the next, you know, next several, several months or so, but uh, what limited scope representation is basically for those of you who are not familiar is it's a way to allow folks to uh, hire an attorney, but still pay a little bit less because um, it allows them to take on more res responsibility for the case. So for example, if somebody comes to you and they say, and they say, okay, uh, I'm really strapped for cash. I don't have the money to hire you to represent me completely, uh, you know, fully represent me in this divorce, but I'm okay representing myself at the final hearing. Will you just help me with my divorce complaint and my depositions and all these documents? Then you could potentially, you know, charge them a little bit less than you would if you had to go to court with them. So they get a break. And this helps, you know, this is something, this is a policy that helps, uh, reduce the amount of people that don't have access to attorneys because it puts it in there, you know, in a price point that they can reach. And then CLE for pro bono, we're going to talk a lot more about that near the end of this presentation. And uh, if you're not familiar with that, you actually can get CLE credit for, or sorry, yeah, you can get CLE credit for doing pro bono work. In fact, if you do nine hours of, if, if you give nine hours worth of advice on the Free Legal Answers website, you can actually receive three uh, general credit hours per CLE cycle up to three. But we will go into more detail with that a little bit later. What else do we do? Well, we fundraise for legal aid. Uh, we are a big funder of legal aid in Arkansas. And we administer the IALTA program to support legal aid. So I do, I'm not really involved in that part of it. The program coordinator doesn't really do a lot with IALTA. That's more of Jordan's game and, uh, and our IALTA person, um, Tamika Parker. Uh, so they, they're the ones who deal more with that. But as you know, IALTA, um, you know, when an attorney has money in an IALTA account, um, any interest that's accrued on that money that they're holding for their clients goes to support legal aid. And so we're administrators of that. And then another thing that we've been working on lately is developing pro se litigant resources like form pleadings. Uh, in particular, the last thing that, that I started working on, which I've just passed on to Edith and, and Jordan to move on to the next step of getting some feedback from really some experts in the area, judges and uh, people that this is their bread and butter, um, are eviction forms. So we've developed actually an entire instruction manual almost and form for folks who are being evicted so that they can respond and um, you know, re make respond to an unlawful detainer complaint. And then we've also done the same thing for pro se landlords too, because we do want to be even handed. So really excited to see where that goes. And hopefully we're going to expand and produce more documents and instructions that can be used for different areas of the law. All right, let's move on to justice gap issues in Arkansas. Well, what is the justice gap, first of all? It's, it refers to the difference between the civil legal needs of low-income Americans 
and the resources available to meet those needs. Um, there are actually uh, over 20 Arkansas counties that have less than one attorney per 1,000, um, which you'll see a map of that on the next slide here. Or, wait, yeah, there it is. <laughs> Um, we have a low number of attorneys relative to our population. Most of you probably already know that. I remember when I was in law school, um, they, that was repeated over and over again. And it's true, we do. Um, you can see these counties right here, these darker ones, have fewer than one attorney per 1,000 people. That is very few, very, very few. And so you can see that with free legal answers, you know, being able to give this legal advice online kind of helps us disperse it to some of these rural areas, because if we had to do it physically in person, it'd be hard to get out there because nobody's out there. Um, <clears throat> so nearly half of active licensed attorneys are concentrated in Little Rock to make things even worse. Um, we have a low number of attorneys and they're all right here in Pulaski County. Not all, but 50%. If you wanna know more about that, you can look at our research on our website. That's arkansasjustice.org, our work research. Um, I think that data is from 2017. Some of it is from 2017. So it's a couple years old, but it's pretty much about the same. All right, poll question. <laughs> we asked about what percentage of Arkansans earn so little that they qualify for legal aid. If you put 25%, then you were correct. <laughs> okay, moving right along. Yes, 25% of our Kansans earn so little that they qualify for legal aid. And how many legal aid attorneys are there in Arkansas? About 54. That's it. <laughs> About 54. If you include other like um, ancillary agencies, like maybe uh, Catholic charities and stuff like that, then there, you can add a couple more on top of that. But as far as the main legal aid providers, it's 54 attorneys approximately. And so, you know, legal aid is never going to be able to serve everybody who qualifies. And for that reason, uh, I used to work for legal aid. And so I know that they have to set certain priorities. And so, for example, when it comes to divorces, they will only do a divorce if it involves some kind of domestic violence or child abuse issue. And so that cuts out a ton of low income people who need a divorce or need help in responding to a divorce so they don't get taken advantage of. Yes, family law, definitely a huge need, but also probate and debt and foreclosure cases are, have a high, high levels of unrepresented people. Seeing a law as a solution, that's another justice gap issue. Low-income households are twice as likely to do nothing about legal problems. They, a lot of times, will fail to identify it as a legal problem. Um, they just don't have the context to be able to see it in that way. It's just a problem. They don't really see that there being a legal solution to it. And then, you know, sometimes it's assuming that it's too expensive to deal with. All right, how many hours of pro bono work are attorneys encouraged to do under rule 6.1 of the Arkansas Rules of Professional Conduct every year? If you put 50 hours, you're correct. Yes, that is the recommendation, 50 hours. Pro bono alone is not going to close the justice gap. And so that's why we're doing all those things that I already talked about, such as, you know, trying to advocate for these policies that are going to make court processes or, you know, make the court system more accessible to folks with low income, can't hire an attorney. Um, and uh, not only that, but maybe folks who have like a language uh, barrier, a language access barrier issue, you know, so making sure things are in, the, in different languages to where they can understand, those types of things help narrow the justice gap and connect people with those resources they need. But that's not to say that we still don't need as many pro bono attorneys as we can possibly get. And so that's why lawyers have this professional responsibility to serve the indigent. There's a 50 hour goal um, and that's found in Arkansas Rules of Professional Conduct 6.1. The, the, the vast majority of those hours should come from services to persons of limited means or organizations that address their needs. The majority of those 50 hours should also be pro bono, but some of it can actually be low bono too, if you look at the rule. Okay, so we talked about access to justice and we talked about the justice gap, what that is, um, and, and some of the ways that it needs to be, that we can go about narrowing it. 
Um, let's move on to free legal answers. I've said this a couple times, and for some of you who aren't familiar with Access to Justice at all, you might be really wondering, like, what is this thing? Like, is this a chat room? Is this like Skype? What is this? So let's dive into it and give you an explanation of what exactly is free legal answers. So it's an online legal advice clinic. It utilizes a secure queue and chat room. Um, so think, um, so think, don't think Skype, it's not video, it's not telephone. You're never gonna see the client. You're never gonna hear the client's voice. Uh, you will only see the questions they have typed in there. You can respond to those questions. They can respond to your response to those questions. And it's kind of like a chat, a back and forth. Now, a lot of times it's not live, meaning they don't get a notification that you're online and you don't get a notification that they're online. So these questions are submitted, they go into a queue and you can pick one and answer it. And you will get an email when you have a response. That could be five minutes later, that could be two days later, but they won't get a notification that you are live in there answering your question. So in that way, it's more like email and less like an actual chat room. <clears throat> so who are our clients? They are low and moderate income Arkansans who can't afford an attorney. Volunteers are attorneys authorized to provide pro bono service. That could mean active licensed attorneys, but that could also, as we mentioned before, that could mean retired attorneys or even attorneys from outside the state. And then of course, our awesome law student volunteers um, that join up with uh, attorneys to do our pro bono clinics, free legal answer pro bono clinics. Who are our partners? Well, we talked about the American Bar, uh, Bar Association, <clears throat> um, Bar Foundation. The Arkansas Bar Association has also provided support and funding. And then we've also got the school's logos up here because they have done really well, a very, a very good job of providing those, getting the word out to the students so that they can help volunteer with this as well. Our virtual clinics, two Fridays a month. That's the answer to that poll question. Uh, so twice a month is when we do these virtual clinics. Here are some pictures here. Over here on the left is actually a picture from a virtual clinic that we did with Intergy Arkansas. Intergy Arkansas every year um, in October, because it's pro bono month, they will do a, how many states do they cover? It's three or four states that they cover. <clears throat> but either way, they'll do a multi-state free legal answer clinic. And so this was our Arkansas team. And uh, we answered, I think, well, we cleared out the queue completely. So we answered all the available questions. But um, I think all in all, between all the states that worked, that did, that uh, participated in the clinic, it was like 50 or 60 attorneys. So we gave out tons of advice that day and everybody had a good time. Um, those are genuine smiles. <laughs> and then over on the right at the bottom, that is one of our regular uh, bi-monthly clinics. Um, the attorney Mary Green at the top left is one of our top um, answer question answerers on the site. She she answers anywhere from 200 to 350 questions a year. Incredible. She just goes at it every day. And then Victor also with hat on in the middle right is one of our other volunteer attorneys. He also answers a ton of questions on top of uh, being a full time attorney. And then our lovely law students from UALR and U of A. And then up on the, on the top right is actually an in-person clinic that we did. We're, when we do our in-person uh, free legal answer clinics, folks are still answering questions via the computer, via the actual platform. However, um, they're actually linking up with the law students and doing that mentoring in person. So we've got our, law, our uh, attorney on the left there, a law student on the right, helping him answer those questions. <clears throat> They are via Zoom and they are one hour, so very convenient. And there was that poll question that you folks already answered. How often do we host free legal answer Zoom clinics? Twice a month. And who are the clients? Arkansans or people with legal problems in Arkansas? That's kind of interesting. So Arkansas, so yeah, it's, it, it is Arkansans primarily, but occasionally you're gonna get a question where it's like, okay, she lives in Texas, but her estranged husband has just filed for divorce in Arkansas. So she needs legal advice from an Arkansas attorney, that type of situation. Um, we said low and moderate income folks. Yes, earning less than 250% of the federal poverty level. You might ask, why didn't we make it lower? 
Well, the reason is it's just legal advice. It's not like we're giving full service representation. And so we might as well go ahead and reach out and grab some of those folks who could become, you know, poorer any minute now, just teetering on the edge of poverty um, and kind of like help fill that gap between what legal aid can cover and, you know, the folks who can, you know, hire an attorney. So kind of like fill in that little overlap between those two areas. And that's kind of a hotspot map of where our, our uh, clients are located. <clears throat> How do we get the word out? Well, like I said before, being online really allows us to even out the avail availability of our pro bono help. Uh, that's, that's a pro of it. The downside, obviously, is that some folks st really struggle with technology. And they might struggle in very rural areas with Wi-Fi connection and those types of things. And so, you know, it's not perfect. But it, at the very least, if you really need it, you can go to a McDonald's nearby, get Wi-Fi or something like that. You know, borrow your neighbor's Wi-Fi, whatever you got to do. And at least you have that option. Um, and we still have we still have work to do, to be honest. You can see from that map that there's areas that we're that we need to improve on. Um, and that's why we have been working on vamping up our Google ads and our social media ads, really working on targeting um, and trying to hit those folks who, um, who really need the service the most and let them know that this is a resource. We have done some training for circuit clerks. In addition to that, a couple times a year, we'll honestly just get in the car and just go drive around to clerks offices. We'll just go around, talk to clerks, um, I'll give them my card if they have any questions. I'll give them a ton of pamphlets for free, free legal answers. We'll give them posters and tell them, hey, and you know, this is how you do it. You say, hey, um, we know that people try to ask you for legal advice all the time. Next time they do that, give them this. Just give them this brochure, tell them free legal answers. And that honestly, that's one of the most um, successful ways that we have of getting the word out. <clears throat> That's just a re reiteration of just what, what we just went over. Community referrals, ABA referrals, social media, online searches, and legal aid referrals. That shows our text uh, Google ad, but we actually had a Little Rock digital um, ad company or ad advertising company, GCW, or I can't remember their name, but they actually donated uh, some graphics that they, they designed for us to use in, for Google ads and for social media ads. I should have put their logo on here. <clears throat> what do clients ask about? Uh, you probably can guess family law is a big one. It's a very, very big one. It affects a lot of people. Divorces and, and the, the custody disputes and all that kind of stuff. Excuse me. Um, we will answer questions about expungements. But when it comes to criminal law, that's it. Nothing else. So no pending criminal cases, no criminal appeals. Um, our malpractice insurance does not cover it. And so, bless their hearts, I sometimes will get volunteers who will go in and they'll answer a bunch of, a bunch of criminal law questions. And I have to send them an email and be like, you are awesome. Love what you're doing. But when you get a criminal law question, there's a button that you can actually click to notify me so I can take care of it. Or notify Edith now that she's taking over and she can take care of it. So yeah, it's family law questions. That's the biggest one. And then we've got these kind of miscellaneous questions that pop up that are just kind of maybe like procedure or they're usually these miscellaneous questions are related to one of the other categories, but they're not quite in there. They're kind of somewhere in between. And then housing is another really big one. That's, and then <clears throat> some of the other kind of medium sized categories, debts, will and probate and civil constitutional rights ones. The constitutional rights ones are honestly some of the hardest to answer. And they are the ones that go, they're the ones that are most likely to go unanswered on the website. And a lot of times it's just because the client will describe a situation where somebody, some public official or someone did something that was crappy, not nice, mean, but not technically illegal, um, you know, and like, really not for sure a, a violation of their rights. And so you feel really bad for them, but there's really not that much that you can tell them. 
And then also, I don't think we have a ton of volunteers on the site who, who specialize in civil and constitutional rights. So if that's your area of expertise, we definitely need you to knock out those questions. I would say we go every month, we will either have, we'll have somewhere between zero and five questions that we have to just withdraw because that we weren't able to find an attorney to answer them. No attorney was able to answer them. They were on the site for 30 days. After the question's been on the site for 30 days, you have to close it. So who answers the questions? Who's on the site? Who are the attorneys um, who are doing all this? Well, we, we've got attorneys from small and medium firms. We've got government and nonprofit attorneys. We have folks from legal services who do this day in and day out, uh, you know, representing folks, uh, low-income folks, and then they turn around and spend hours answering questions on the free legal answers website. So we've got a, we look, we've got a lot of active licensed attorneys, but we've also got retired attorneys. Um, two of our top uh, attorneys who answer questions. Paul Bowen and um, Mary Green, who I just, you just saw a picture of her. They are both retired and they answer just tons of questions. So um, really happy that they, that we have that emeritus attorney rule that allows them to do that. Then voluntary and active attorneys under that same administrative order are allowed to do so. And then we also have attorneys license in another state. Um, I know there's one attorney volunteer who works for Walmart um, who's not licensed in Arkansas, but she still answers questions on the side. And then law students, if they're supervised by a licensed attorney. But um, I will add, we have had some undergrad students work with attorneys too, that were just kind of interested in law school and they wanted to get a feel for what it's like to, to go in and problem solve as a legal professional. <clears throat> How are we doing on time? Good. All right, let's move into answering questions. All right, so ar.freelegalanswers.org. That's the actual, um, that's the actual name of the website URL. So how does it, how do we go about doing this? Well, first of all, you have to set up an account. It's very, very fast, very, very easy. Um, you click volunteer attorney. Well, first go to the website and then click volunteer attorney registration, which is up there. We've got a nice big red arrow pointing to it. So you can see you accept the terms of use. You complete your profile. It's not very many questions. It's very, very brief. And then your, uh, your request is submitted. And then Edith gets an email that says that an attorney registration is pending approval. She goes in, she checks your bar license number, checks who you are, verifies that you are you know, a licensed attorney, <clears throat> and then uh, approves it. So fairly simple setup. Okay. So picking the question, how do we go about doing that? Um, well, keep in mind, you're in charge of your pro bono work. You are. So you get to decide what questions you answer. And you can sort. You've got a sort button right there. You can see you can sort by type of question. You can click that to where it only shows family law questions. We've got attorneys um, that only want to do expungement questions. That's awesome. Um, they can click on that and switch to expungement. The clients actually go in and categorize their own questions. So a lot of times what Edith and I have to do is go back and recategorize them. We'll read the question and say, oh, okay, well, this is actually a housing law question. So we'll move it so the attorneys can find, you know, can, can more easily find the question. <clears throat> and so that we get accurate data at the end of the year, right? So you can answer as many or as few questions as you like. You can spend 15 minutes on a question. You can spend five minutes on a question. You can go through and look for all the ones that you know you can answer in under five minutes and knock those out. Um, and if you're interested in helping veterans and specifically your senior citizens, we actually have specific label, uh, special labels for that on the left that will show up in that flagging area with the red flags. Another thing to remember is that you can pre preview questions before committing to answering them. Um, so you can actually look through it, you can read it, um, and uh, you can see who the opposing party is. We'll, we'll talk a little bit more about conflict checking in a minute here. Okay, problematic questions. I mentioned this a minute ago. Um, if you ever notice a problematic question, let me know by clicking the notify the uh, state administrator button. 
about this question. Well, not me now, but Edith. <laughs> um, so notify us, let us know, and we'll take care of it. But what's a problematic question, right? What are we talking about? Well, what if you get a question and let's say, we'll just use divorce as an example. It's a divorce and she says, she starts talking about her assets or he starts talking about his assets. And he says, you know, my bank account with $500,000 in it and my Maserati and my this and that. And you're like, um, why are you on this site? Uh, you could probably afford an attorney, I think. Um, you can notify me and I will send or notify Edith. And we'll send a boilerplate message that says, hey, it's come to our attention that you, it doesn't look like you qualify for this site. Um, you know, we might send them a list of attorneys that they can look into or something like that, you know, and politely decline to answer the question. Questions about criminal law, we can't answer them. Like I said, malpractice insurance doesn't cover it. Just notify us. And we'll send them a message letting them know, hey, it's a criminal law question. We can't help you out. But, um, you know, check these other resources that we've put here for you. And then when a client is asking a question for someone else, kind of ruins the client, attorney client uh, confidentiality there. There is some discretion with that third one. If somebody's asking a question on behalf of someone else and it's it's clear that there's some kind of disability or something that's a barrier to them doing it themselves um, and there's like a close relationship shown, I will sometimes just go ahead and answer the question. There is a little bit of discretion on that third on that third prong. So keep that in mind. But if you're unsure, just notify us. Okay, and this is actually an old picture. They added a new feature, I think. Um, so this says, I want to answer the question. That's what that orange button says down there. But we actually have one that says, I want to answer this question later. That lets you save the question, not answer it there, but keep it away from the other attorneys on the site so you can answer it yourself at a later date. So picking a question, continue. When you've picked a question, take it out of the queue by clicking I want, right, like I said, um, or by clicking I want to answer this question later. What all? What sometimes we'll, our, our attorneys will do, our attorneys that volunteer at our clinics or virtual Zoom clinics, is they will go in ahead of time and they'll grab a bunch of questions that they want to answer. And then when we start the clinic, they'll already have them in their personal queue at the top. And then they can just go through those with the students. And that way they don't have to risk another attorney grabbing that question before they can get back to it. All right. Okay, so here is the chat thread with your client. This is what it looks like. And I'm gonna be very honest with you. It's a great website. Um, there is a little bit of glitchiness when it comes to typing your answer in, it lags. It lags a little bit and it's kind of frustrating. It's not super, super bad. I can, I can sometimes just ignore it. But what I'll do instead many times is just open, a, open up a Word document, type my question into the Word document and then copy and paste it. It's a lot quicker, more efficient in my mind. Okay, so you can chat back and forth with your client here. You can actually send the client documents. And you can see right there, you've got a place where you can add attachments. You can insert links. And you can keep your time. You can keep your time. Um, we discussed this a little bit earlier and I'll go into more depth about it, but you, you can get CLE credit for doing this stuff. <clears throat> if you don't, uh, if you don't record your time, we will automatically just like, we'll automatically assign 15 minutes per question. That's what we'll give you as far as for the purposes of getting your, your CLE. Okay. And then you can return a question if you change your mind. So down there at the bottom, change your mind, can't answer this question. I want to return the question. And what that means when you're returning it, it means that you're putting the question back in the main queue so the other attorneys can see it. What are the components of a good answer? I, I know this might seem a little bit elementary to you guys because you're all practicing attorneys. And, um, but it's a, it is a little bit different because in your practice, usually you'll talk to someone on the phone, they get a sense of who you are, how your voice is, you know, your style of communication, or you'll have an in-person consultation, but this is 100% via chat room. And these are folks that probably are a little bit nervous when it comes to attorneys, probably don't have very much experience with attorneys, probably think attorneys are aliens. <laughs> so 
uh, it's important that you make sure that you're coming across um, the right way because we want them to be able to digest the answer. We want them to feel like they're being empathized with and they're being understood and that we're there to help them and not put them down or something like that. And I mean, I've been guilty before. You get in a hurry, you answer the question and you forget to put in those little niceties and they kind of like don't respond <laughs> great. And you know, that's gonna happen sometimes where someone just doesn't like your answer because sometimes the truth is hard to hear. But for the most part, just throwing in little expressions of sympathy can go a long way. I'll usually start a question with, oh my gosh, well, not oh my gosh, but I'll start a question with Miss Jackson or Miss So-and-so. I am really sorry to hear about the trouble that you've been dealing with. Um, I hope that things can, you know, I hope that this, this all works out, blah, 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 and then go into your answer. And you think, okay, well, how much good is that going to do? But you'd, you'd be surprised. It actually does go a long way. I skipped that part there, introduce yourself. Um, I typically will just call myself Attorney Abby. You don't, the, the client doesn't see your name unless you tell them that just generates a random attorney 42 or whatever. I don't like to be completely anonymous. So I'll let them know who I am, but usually I'll just put Attorney Abby. I think it, see, it makes me sound more um, relatable, you know, just like a regular person who they can actually ask questions to. State the facts as you understand them and any assumptions you're making. That's kind of a, a CYA kind of thing almost because you're, you're saying, okay, this is what I'm basing my answer on right here. This is the universe that I'm working with. And based on just this, here's what I'm saying. <clears throat> and then obviously the plain language, uh, that can be really tough. That can be really, really tough. I've, you know, I've, we've all probably done the explaining thing and it's explaining things to clients can be, it can be difficult because it's jargon. I mean, we go to law school and we learn all these words and we forget that people don't use those words. Uh, so when you're explaining things, it's very important to, if you use a legal term, define it or give an example in writing. Um, because what we don't want is to spend a whole bunch of time answering questions and it just goes right over their head. And it doesn't mean that the person's not intelligent. It just means that they don't know that jargon. Two different things. And then re reiterate important points and action steps. It's okay to put things in bold. I often will do uh, tables or um, I'll do lists. Number one, number two, number three. Um, it's a lot easier to digest in my mind than just paragraphs. And you know, this is not the time or place to be super concise, like you know, a brief for court. Um, it's okay if you say the same thing three or four times. Say it multiple ways, you know, and at least one of those ways will we'll get through to them, hopefully. And you can supplement your answer. For those of you that aren't aware, arlawhelp.org is a great website to look up. It's got all of these resources that have been put together by legal service providers. Um, for example, we've got service by publication or warning order fact sheet, all this great information about what it is, how to do it, how to go about doing it. Um, there are fact sheets on divorce. There's actually a, um, a divorce packet on that website for folks that want to do a pro se divorce, no children and no property. That is very useful. Um, I'm not sure who all was involved in developing that. It's a great form. It kind of follows the style of ad libs if you've ever done those. So definitely supplement your answers. I wouldn't, I usually, I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't just send the fact sheet. I would also at least provide like a couple, a couple sentences of, of explanation. <clears throat> ah. I think this is a good moment to interject. Rachel had a really good question okay. about perhaps the possibility of having repeated questions, maybe having a, a client asking a question multiple times and maybe using the resources to have several different attorneys answer the same question. And so if you can explain a little bit how it doesn't happen that way and why. That's a good question, Rachel. So we daily um, or every other day um, go, th go through the website and look at the questions and we can see if the same person has submitted multiple questions. 
And usually they'll pop up right next to each other. And we have a boilerplate message that we can send to them saying, hey, we need you to keep all parts of your question together, only submit one question. Um, and we're gonna, for that reason, we're gonna go ahead and withdraw this second question. Please add any additional information that you wanna submit to your, to your first question. And <clears throat> another thing is that one person can't just go in and just answer question or ask question after question after question. They get, I think, three or four questions. And so if they submit a question, and for example, and like I said before, if they submit a question and then we have to withdraw it because we have not found an attorney to answer it. Oh, the same question from different people. How long do I have to file an answer to this divorce? Oh, I mean, we often get the same question from multiple people. Because on free legal answers, each, um, it's all private. So each chat thread with each person is private. I don't know if that's what you're asking. So for example, if you answer one person's question, how long do I have to file an answer to this divorce? If you tell one person 30 days, no one else is gonna be able to say, see that, only that one person. Yes, we do have a little bit. So she's asking, seems like a repository of standard answers would be helpful for volunteers. Um, we do have a little bit of that. We could expand it more. And, you know, we're always accepting, you know, if people have forms that they want us to add as a, a resources or, or something like that to the website and the training materials, once you get on the Free Legal Answers website, you'll see that we've got an actual uh, page with different kind of resources that you can use. <clears throat> Definitely. Yeah, we could expand on that for sure, but we do have some like templates, uh, templates that you can use. And, and uh, we also heavily rely on like those fact sheets from AR Law Help, which are also copied onto the website. Good question and good suggestion. But yeah, we're always trying to expand on that and add more, more ways to kind of streamline it. I actually went to a conference recently, the Equal Justice Conference a couple months back which is with like all the access to justices from across the country. And there are other access to justices and other organizations um, that are a lot more, they're, they're more staffed, they're more uh, funded than we are. They're larger, more expansive. And for example, even in California, they actually have a, 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 a panel of volunteer attorneys who uh, quality check every answer that's submitted to free legal answers. So attorney, uh, attorney volunteers will submit a question to the volunteers who quality check, and then the, the answers get submitted to the, to the client. <clears throat> so, you know, there's always more that we could be doing and definitely having those like standard answers. Um, we do have a standard answer for like, um, in form of operas. So how to, you know, ask the court to waive a filing fee. We have standard forms for that and a couple other ones, but we could expand for sure. Great comment. All right, so what are some things to avoid? Okay, so we wanna, we wanna avoid referring divorces or custody matters to legal aid just because they're so stacked. Um, <clears throat> we have an exception to that if it involves divorce, uh, child abuse or spousal abuse of some kind. One caveat, I think I, I said that legal aid only represents uh, people in divorces if it involves domestic violence or uh, child abuse. There is some discretion there, and they have been known to also represent like elderly uh, people and elderly folks in divorces. It kind of depends on what funding source they're using. All right. This bottle is way too big. I feel like I'm going to pour it on my face. <laughs> Okay, we also wanna avoid suggesting that the client hire a lawyer. Um, however, we've got some exceptions to that as well. Um, cases where a contingency fee is the usual arrangement. Um, sometimes I will go in and answer a question and I'll say, hey, this is actually a great case for you to go get some, uh, some free consultations with different attorneys because they're gonna only charge you a contingency fee and you're not gonna pay anything up front, potentially. So go ask around and you know, get some 
to give some, have some conversations with different attorneys. A lot of those would be like personal injury cases. Um, and then also referring for limited scope representation. I do this a lot. Um, in the next slide, I'll have a link to our unbundling resources. Like I said before, unbundling, a way for attorneys to represent you in part of your case, but not the whole case, makes it cheaper. Um, this, yes, we've, we've actually got, um, we have a list of attorneys on our website who provide unbundling services. And, um, and so I'll refer them to that and I'll explain what unbundling is and I'll say, it sounds like you might be able to, or you know, you may be able to afford at least, you know, some help from an attorney. Um, and it's going to be more useful to you than what I can provide to you here. Why don't you call some of these folks on this list and find out how much they would charge for, to just do, you know, your depositions, your divorce or whatever. And then also cases where it's practically impossible for the client to represent themselves. Um, these are rare. I've done that before, too, though, and just said, hey, I'm very sorry, but you're going to have to start call making some calls, doing some research, because this is this is very complicated. And the reason that we suggest that they don't that we don't make a suggestion that they hire a lawyer generally is because it just seems kind of like that would be giving them the runaround in a way, because like that's the reason why they're on the site for the most part is because they can't hire an attorney. And then we also try to avoid referring uh, avoid referring clients to court clerks for assistance um, or forms unless we know that that clerk that specific clerk that we're talking about provide that and same thing we just don't want them. We don't want to send them on a wild goose chase because some clerks won't provide, you know, forms and things. So <clears throat> only suggest that if you know that court, that court clerk routinely provides those things. Okay, so back to this one. We love it. CLE credit for pro bono work. What does Arkansas CLE for pro bono rule say? Well, it says that you get credit only, uh, well, let's see, yeah, credit is only available if the case is referred by an approved sponsor, like us, we're an approved sponsor, and any work that you do on free legal answers counts towards your uh, pro bono, your CLE credit, CLE for pro bono credit. Also, any work that you do for Center for Arkansas, Arkansas Legal Services, or Legal Aid of Arkansas, or the Arkansas Bar, or a local bar that is running some type of official pro bono program. And then also any court appointing attorney for pro bono representation. <clears throat> the client must be a person of limited means, which if you're doing it through free legal answers, if you're doing it through a legal aid provider, that's a given. And then your credit is earned at a rate of one hour credit for every three hours of pro bono with a maximum of three hours per CLA cycle. Meaning, in, put in other words, if you do... For every three hours you work on the free legal answer website, you get one hour of general CLE credit. And you can do that three times per year, meaning nine hours of pro bono work equals three CLE credits. And you can, like, like I said, you can track your time on the site or we will award 15 minutes of credit per question. And what do you do to claim your credit? Well, these forms are provided by um, uh, the Office of Professional Programs. We have them. We have to mark off on it. So, if you want to get your if you want to get your CLE credit that way, and you know you've done your time on the website, just contact Edith, and she will uh, send you that form. You'll fill it out. She'll complete it, and then she'll send it in to the Office of Professional Programs. And Edith just put her email address in the chat for you guys. Frequently asked questions. Moving into the last segment here. Um, and I'm gonna go through these kind of quick just to make sure that we have a little bit of time for questions at the end. Will I ever have to enter an appearance for a client? No, our clients have agreed that the services they will receive is limited and will not include court appearances. By the way, I'm so sorry, I forgot to mention this earlier when we were talking about unbundling. On our website, we don't, we don't only have a list of attorneys who provide unbundling. We also have resources for attorneys who want to do unbundling services. And so we have actually, um, we have contracts. We have uh, form contracts that you can use, fee agreements with an explanation that this is like limited service. So if you're interested in doing that, get on our website, click on unbundling at the top. We've got you, we'll help you out. 
Is it ethical to limit my service to just advice? Yes, we talked about this too. Legal Aid pioneered advice brief service clinic two years ago. Um, this is the same thing, it's just online. What if the client needs documents prepared? If you want to prepare a document for them, that is totally fine, um, but it is up to you. You certainly do not have to. Um, and when you're doing that type of unbundling work, preparing documents, there's a disclosure that you have to include. It's very brief. I'm going to also provide a disclosure. Not all judges are aware of, accepting of, knowledgeable of, I'm not sure, of unbundling. And so even if you include this disclosure, they might still have this explanation or this expectation that you're representing the client. So I would just check beforehand um, with the clerk and see and like make sure that this is a court that's familiar with unbundling so that you know you don't get into a bind. But just to let you know, I have heard of like some judges being like kind of like, what is this? You know. <clears throat> the disclosure goes uh, just below the Rule 11 signature, and the client signs it, not you. As long as you don't file the document on their behalf via e-filing, I think you should be okay. But if you file it on their behalf, that's when I would be a little bit wary and of making sure that the court was aware of what you were trying to do there just to be clear okay <clears throat> what about checking for conflicts well we're only worried about known conflicts here there's no need to do a full conflicts check um, the rules explicit explicitly state um, that in in situations like this exactly like this um, we're only worried about known conflicts so each client that submits a question they submit an opposing party if it's nobody you know, if you're if you're completely unaware of who they are, then you're good to go. If you recognize it, if it's a conflict, don't even open the question. Don't worry about it. Somebody else will answer it. But if you want to run a full conflicts check, you're more than welcome. To. Will I be covered by malpractice insurance? That was one of our poll questions. The answer is yes. The American Bar Association pays for a malpractice policy for the work volunteers do on our site. However, if you take it off the site, if you allow them to call you if you decide to take it on pro bono, that malpractice insurance ceases um, and will not apply to those interactions. What should I do if the client didn't include all the information I need? Happens all the time. Um, so you'll start out with some general information. For example, if the client says something like, I need help with filing a divorce, you can explain the grounds for divorce. Even saying you gotta have grounds for divorce, which means you have to have a reason for a divorce, such as general indignities, which means anything mean they did to you, or 18 month separation, et cetera, et cetera. Um, even providing that kind of information goes a long way because you got to think these people have no context to go off of a lot of times. And so just providing that um, basic structure for them can go a long way. And then you can ask follow up questions say, okay, here's what I can tell you right now. However, if you want a more clear answer, you're going to have to tell me this, this, and this. You're gonna to have to elaborate. Okay, what if I wanna know how many questions I have answered or how many hours I have volunteered? We have access to all that information. We have a report running system on the website. And so just shoot Edith an email and she will let you know what your numbers are. Keep in mind the American Bar Association provides recognition of individual volunteers who answer at least 50 questions and law firms that answer at least 75 questions. So that's multiple attorneys from the same law firm. And we also, access to justice, we also do awards usually annually for our top contributors. <clears throat> oh my gosh, we're already at one o'clock. <laughs> uh, my expertise is limited to a very narrow area. Should I answer other kinds of questions? Yes, you should, because you might see a divorce question there, but you click on it, realize, oh my gosh, it's just a service question. And, you know, most attorneys, all attorneys should know at least the basics of service of process because it's the same, well, mostly the same across different areas of the law. But if you're not comfortable with, the, with answering that type of question, just don't answer it. You are the boss. Okay, questions. If you can't stick around uh, for questions or you don't have any, feel free to drop off. Um, 
But if you have questions, we'll, we'll be here for a couple minutes. Edith. Yes, so I think we're ready to open up for questions. Um, please, if you want to put them in the chat, uh, or if you want to just put your name and I'll unmute you if you'd rather um, tell us a question. Thanks to you, Kimberly. And like I said at the beginning, I don't know if you join in um, late, just I'll re reiterate, but um, I will be sending out those certificate of attendance for everyone that stayed uh, for almost the entire uh, CLE to get your ethics credit. Thank you. Thank you for participating. Thank you, Christy. And like Abby said, if you have any questions regarding unbundling services or any questions while you're trying to set up your account for the Free Legal Answers website, just reach out to me and I'll be happy to answer them. Thank you, Lori. Good to know, Rachel. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. That's cool. Thanks, Thanks Michelle. Yeah. And Lori. Thank you, Rochelle. Okie dokie. Thank you, Sharnae. And for those who are still here, don't forget to fill out the survey. Thank you. I think the survey might be mandatory, like automatic. I think they can't exit out until they answer it. Yeah. There's probably a way to bypass it. Looks like we don't have any more questions, so we are going to go ahead and end this CLE. Thank you all so much, and welcome, Edith. I'm so glad you're taking over for me. Wouldn't have it any other way. <laughs> Thank you, Abby. All right. Bye, guys. Bye, guys.